Hi, this is Dennis Snipe, host of the thought-provoking, solution-oriented talk show, daring to make a difference in our community's entitled Focus Talk. And I'm looking for you to be the next featured guest on Focus Talk. If you're an entrepreneur, an author, community-based organization, artist, or if you're simply daring to make a difference in your community, I need to hear from you. Here's what I need you to do. Send an email to Dennis at DennisSnipe.com with your name, brief description of what you do, contact number, and why you should be a guest on Focus Talk. I look forward to hearing from you soon. In the meantime, please continue to stay focused. You're in tune to Chicago's most popular college music radio station. 89.3 is WKKC. This is Focus Talk, the thought-provoking, solution-oriented talk show daring to make a difference in our communities. We're talking on a regular basis because the answers really matter. What are we talking about? Well, I'm glad you asked. We're talking about politics, religion, personal development, history, music. And then from time to time, we are spotlighting positive people who are doing positive things right here in the Inglewood community, the Chicagoland area, as well as across the nation. I am your host, Dennis Snipe. Joining me in the studio today is Minister Ishmael Muhammad and Dr. Wesley Muhammad. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. It's an honor and privilege to be here yes, on sir. your show. It is a pleasure a pleasure yeah. to have you here and to talk a little bit about uh, various things and to give our listeners some insight. Now, uh, Minister Muhammad, give me some information as to your role with the, the Nation of Islam. I have the great honor and privilege of serving as the Student National Assistant Minister to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And in that role and function and capacity, I have the responsibility of helping to oversee our many mosques and study groups throughout the country in Central America, the Caribbean, and beyond. And I have the great honor and privilege of speaking every Sunday uh, on behalf of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan from our headquarters mosque right here in Chicago on 73rd in Stony Island. And this uh, webcast is broadcast uh, worldwide every Sunday at 10 a.m. So that, I guess, is uh, capsulizes some of my uh, responsibilities, uh, but I'm very honored to, and to have the privilege to serve. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Dr. Wesley, yes, what sir. is your role with the Nation of Islam? Uh, to help the Honorable Brother Minister Louis Farrakhan and his student national assistant minister, Minister Ishmael, here at headquarters in Chicago to assist in doing the work. What um, the role and the obligations and the work the brother Minister Ishmael just described. Yes, sir. Um, I, I am here to help him help the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan execute that. All right. Now, gentlemen, I'm, I'm going to get right to the heart of things and uh, we can we can talk back and forth. And please give me your uh, opinion or as, as my father would say, the funk uncut as it relates to. <laughs> to various things that are going on in our community. At this particular time, we're going through a situation as to the blame game. The, the violence in Chicago has reached an epidemic proportion or a pandemic proportion. And we go through the blame game of the police are saying, well, it's the fault of the parents. The parents are saying that it is the, the police the church is saying that it is the decline of the family structure and we go back and forth on a regular basis. So, gentlemen, what do you say and why? 
There are a myriad of problems that our community is facing and all of us that are at the bottom are looking for not only the solution but the cause of these problems that we are facing and struggling with. But the real cause that has produced these problems are not at the bottom. It's not on the street. It's at the top. It comes from the highest levels of a government that we have put our trust in but has failed us. And since we want truth and we want to speak nothing but the truth on these airwaves to our people, we have to know as a community and as a people what the conspiracy is that is ill affecting us as a people. So this problem is created by those in power. Victor Hugo said that uh, Dr. Martin Luther King quoted him and I don't have it exactly and maybe my, my dear brother uh, can remember it. You know, sins are committed. And Victor Hugo said, you know, it is not, it is the darkness that's responsible for producing the sins that are committed. Paul said it like this. We war not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against the rulers of darkness of this world spiritual wickedness in high places so everybody in the blame game is looking to put that blame on the little man and the little brother that's in the street so we can condemn our brothers in the street for the killing and the crimes that they are doing and the evil that is being perpetrated and done by us on us. But how are you going to condemn the brother as a gang banger for the things that he's doing on the block when the biggest gang bangers are governments that are going into foreign nations and taking the resources that belong to the people of those nations and they justify war and the shedding of innocent blood in the uh, uh, based upon a lie so all of the trouble that we see America in and the growing hatred for America particularly out of Islamic Muslim nations is because of a government's wicked international and foreign policies and her going into these other nations and exploiting the resources of those nations and making war with the innocent of our planet. So if we want to look at the cause that has produced the effect, it didn't start at the bottom. It started from the top. Indeed. Indeed. So if it is that simple just to basically look at the situation and analyze it and say that it's coming from the top down and that it's not necessarily the individuals who are trying to to live, who are trying to make a way for their families, isn't it just that easy to eradicate it? Because I, I'm thinking, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong, that if we have, and when I say we, I mean the the African or the 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 African in American in America who has been dealing with these issues for so long to say, well, this is no longer something that I want to be a part of. Why can't we? Uh, um, um, do for self why can't we love one another and be able to eradicate the situation it would seem that it's easy so what's happening in the meantime that we're still experiencing these issues after so many years it, it, it seems as though that we should be able to get the message immediately and move forward it only speaks to the depth and breadth of how we as a people, descendants from Africa, were so thoroughly destroyed. Mm 
Mm. We were not just brought into physical slavery. Slavery has been around on our planet for many, many, many centuries. But when it came to the black man of Africa being brought into the Western hemisphere, we were robbed of our names. Our culture was taken from us. Our religion was taken from us. Our concept of God was stripped from us. So when you strip a man of his name, his language, his culture, his religion, his concept of God, his moral values, you have in effect destroyed that person and destroyed that people. So why has it taken us so long? Because you're dealing with a slave mind. So you have to break up a slave mind that is has been programmed and conditioned to constantly look and depend on the master for his basic necessities. He doesn't know how to do for self because he was never taught to do for self. So when we were set free, the Emancipation Proclamation, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said they gave us a half a freedom because they never gave us the tools by which we could exercise that freedom. So we were never given freedom. We were only liberated from servitude or liberated from one condition of slavery only to be put into another form of slavery. But the mind was never repaired. The mind was never restored. And we have never been given an education that would allow us to do for help for self, create for self. And that's why the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that a man that mistreats you, you can't expect him to teach you, right? So what we've been struggling with, it particularly in the last 150 plus years of so-called freedom, is to try and break up the old mind that is a slave mind and break the curse of Willie Lynch that disallows us as a people to unite because of self-hatred, distrust, envy, and fear. These were the tools that Willie Lynch said that they installed so effectively on black people that every time that we try to make progress, every time that we reach for our brother and sister to do something positive and constructive constructive for self and our people, the distrust that we have, the suspicion that comes up in our hearts for one another, the hatred and the fear of our enemy disallows us to really take a free independent step to do something for ourselves like other intelligent and civilized people on our planet. So this is a process and I respectfully say the only effective process in destroying that mind and making a new mind in our people is the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad as taught by Minister Farrakhan. Dr. Wesley, you speak in your work about the black man being God. Yes, sir. Hey, explain that concept to me. Well, be clear. Dr. Wesley doesn't speak about <laughs> the black man being God. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad revealed to the black man and woman in America that the black man is God. That's and right. I learned it from the honorable brother minister Louis Farrakhan. So I'm just a student reciting the lesson, the lesson of the teacher. So yes, the black man is God, but of course, in our current state, we are dead gods, one can say. The situation that brother student minister Ishmael um, so clearly pointed out, the issue of our victimization by the Willie Lentz syndrome, uh, the crab in the, barrel. in the barrel mindset that we have that's preventing the progress that you're asking, um, why have we made it yet? Um, it's a top-down problem, just as the society's problem is top-down, meaning those on top are imposing but with black people, we have a top-down problem 
meaning we have brain damage. We are literally a brain damaged people. So all of the lack of progress is because we literally need, need to be mind fixed. Mind fixed. And, and that's what the truth of the black man as God um, can help facilitate. So, so gentlemen, my, my question is, if there is the, the idea of the black man being God, and if I am Pukio Ray Ray, mm -hmm. and I have that um, different mentality, how do I get to my heritage? How do I get to that particular point? If I'm if I'm in the hood now, I'm I'm dealing with life as it comes, whatever it is, and I'm I, I just hit the bricks. I'm trying to deal with the fact that I can't get a job because now I'm a convicted felon. There are certain places that I can't go because I'm a convicted felon. There are certain individuals I cannot even hang out with because I'm a convicted felon. So if I haven't any skills, if I don't know how to create a resume, if I don't know, uh, if I don't have the personable skills to be able to talk for myself so that I can achieve employment, how can I possibly get to what it is that you talk about me being a God. I don't understand that concept. And then to be able to get there so that I can utilize that. And then most importantly, be able to help the other brothers who are going through the same situation that I've gone through and I'm trying to get to the next level. What do I do? I, I certainly would like my brother, Dr. Wesley, to, to comment on it. The concept of God God means force and power. So when we say the black man is God, you, it is saying what you possess of power and force from the creator. Mm -hmm. The concept of God has been falsely represented to us and unless you know the scriptures and are able to identify those scriptures or passages that really inform you in the plainest language that you are God because David the psalmist said it, ye are all gods. So the honorable Elijah Muhammad only revealed the truth that is found right in the scriptures. Ye are all God's children of the most high God. And then you find God making a man according to the book of Genesis. He makes him in his image and after his likeness. So how could you be thinking or relating to a God to be anything outside of yourself? So you're looking to, to what? Space for a God? You're looking to the air? You're looking to the wind? So once we understand that God is real and that we have that potential, as you just said, to become God in the fullest sense of being a possessor of knowledge, wisdom, understanding. But Pookie and Ray Ray first need to know who they are a descendant of because it's all coded in the DNA. And it's about awakening that consciousness that you may tap into that DNA of your programming that takes you all the way back to the creator himself. So once I know who I am, now I can begin to unleash and um, upload programming that's already in my DNA and hard drive. But I got to have the right operating system put in my mind in order for me to open up files that the enemy corrupted. Open up the software that would allow me access to open up many, many windows. But my files were corrupted and my files were deleted and the enemy put the wrong operating hard drive in my head. So I cannot unleash the power that the God himself has put in me. So it first starts, and I'm going to let the doctor chime in because I'm no, getting into the preaching. That. The, no. but, but, but the first thing for, for my brother Pookie and Ray Ray is to know who are you? The greatest knowledge is the knowledge of self because once I know who I am, now I can get busy with life's 
purpose. But I first got to know who I am. Why are we killing each other like, like we're killing each other on the streets of Chicago? These are men and women and brothers who don't know who they are and have lost the value of who they are because the world of the enemy has devalued us. Nigga is not a term that we called each other. That's a term that the enemy put on us and now we use it. And we've endeared each other according to that term. But at the end of the day, who am I? Where did I come from? And where am I going? That knowledge makes a pookie and a ray ray to begin to access more knowledge and now to begin to live a constructive life, to be respectful of his brother, respectful of his sister, respectful of his mother and family. That's the knowledge that's missing in the neighborhood. And you can't get it from Kennedy King. You can't get it from Malcolm X. You can't get it from the city colleges, the state colleges. You can't get it from the federal universities. That knowledge you can only access from the nation of Islam. That's right. That's right. Gentlemen, we must take a break. <laughs> I, I don't want to, but I just need to just for a moment. We're going to take a break just for a moment. We will be right back with more Focus Talk on Chicago's number one college radio station, 89.3 WKKC. Excuse me. I had a brother Jonathan back here. He was, he was uh, telling me what to say. <laughs> he was feeding you. He was feeding me. <laughs> feeding you from on top. This is Focus Talk with Dennis Knight on 89.3 WKKC. Hi, this is Dennis Snipe, host of the thought-provoking, solution-oriented talk show, daring to make a difference in our community's entitled Focus Talk. And I'm looking for you to be the next featured guest on Focus Talk. If you're an entrepreneur, an author, community-based organization, artist, or if you're simply daring to make a difference in your community, I need to hear from you. Here's what I need you to do. Send an email to Dennis at DennisSnipe.com with your name, brief description of what you do, contact number, and why you should be a guest on Focus Talk. I look forward to hearing from you soon. In the meantime, please continue to stay focused. Joe. Black Killer. 